Hi Notion is. The day has finally arrived when Notion has added automation functionality to the app. I've had access to this feature for quite a while now actually. So in this video, I'm going to share four ways that I've been using this feature with a particular focus on project management because that gives us some great examples of workflows that you can manage using this functionality. But obviously you will be able to use this functionality to manage processes in other areas of your business or for your personal productivity as well. This feature is triggered whenever new pages are created in a database or properties are updated in those databases. And it allows you to do things like updating properties in the same database, creating pages in the same database or other databases, editing pages in the same database or another database, and also sending Slack notifications notifications with much more specific trigger criteria than we have had in the past. So to show you the first example, if we just go to my projects database here and click on this new zap icon, then we will see the automations which I've already created for this database just here. And to create a new automation, all we need to do is click this button down at the bottom of the pop-up window just there. We could call this new project and we can choose first of all whether or not we want to trigger this automation whenever a particular activity happens in every view in the database or in a particular view. So as you will see as I go through these examples, this option here is actually really powerful because it allows you to create more specific triggers than you would be able to if you were just relying on this feature's built-in trigger options. So I'll come back to that in a minute. When it comes to adding a trigger, we can trigger our automation when a new page is added to the database, when any property is edited at all, when particular properties are edited, or if we have a drop down property in our database, like a status, select, or multi select property, then we can actually choose specific statuses that we want to look out for. So, for example, if the status is set to done, then we can trigger our automation then. Or if you're using a status property, then you can also choose groups as your trigger criteria. Once we've selected that trigger criteria, we can just click done there and then do this add an action and we have a few more options here. So the simple options are just to edit properties in the same database. So for example, we could record the date when our status was set to planning and we could set that date to today or now even if we want to uh, record the day and time when a particular action happened rather than just the date. But we can also add pages to this database or another database and edit pages in this database or another a database and we can send Slack notifications to particular people or particular channels. So I'll show you how to configure all of those different options in just a minute. But for now, if we go back to the automations that I've got set up already, for this first example, I'm going to create a set of tasks whenever a particular type of project is added to my projects database. So up until now, if you wanted to create a specific set of tasks for new projects, then you've had to use buttons inside a page in order to create that list of tasks automatically and link them to your project page. But now we can skip that step and just handle that process automatically like this. So first of all, you'll notice we've got two different automations set up for this particular database, one for website development tasks, one for logo design tasks. And we've got views for each of those different types of projects as well. So I wouldn't usually set up my database to be split up like this uh, based on the type of project. But the reason we're doing this is so that we can create our automations and create more specific triggers for those automations so that if it's a website development project that we're creating, we create a list of tasks which are specific to that type of project. So obviously I wouldn't include this view in my main project management page probably, but you could just keep this somewhere out of the way until you're ready to create those new projects. And then you'd obviously navigate there and create the project in one of these views in order to automatically create the tasks for that project as well. And if we click into this automation, first of all, you can see we are triggering this automation when activities happen in the website development view specifically. This automation is currently active, so you can also pause uh, automations if you don't want to delete them, but you don't want them running for whatever reason. So that's quite useful to have there. 
And our trigger criteria is just a nice and simple, when a page is added to this view, then we want to create tasks in our task database. When it comes to defining the different tasks, you've got a couple of different options here. First of all, we're selecting our task database as a database to create the tasks in. Then we can choose a page template to use as the template for that new task. And we can choose to populate certain properties as well for those new tasks. So first of all, the most important properties to populate obviously is the one that links our task page to the project page. So for that, we're just choosing the project relation that's in my task database. And we want to populate that with the with a link to the page that's been created in my projects database. So that they're linked together automatically. And then obviously, if we do want to set specific details for this new task, we can choose task name, assignee, status, etc., and just add those. So we could do task one. Uh, status can be set to not started automatically and so on and so forth. But obviously, because you've got the option to choose a particular template here as well, then there's two ways that you can define your tasks when you're setting up this type of automation. One option would be to create a new template for each type of task that you want to create from these automations. Obviously, the downside of that is you will end up with a lot of templates for your task database, particularly if you're creating different tasks for different types of projects. And especially if you're sharing that master task database across several different teams. So what you could do instead is create a page template, which includes the page content that you want to populate for every new task that you create, and then use this set of options here to define the specific values that should be set for each different type of task that you create through this automation. So once you've created one task there, you can just click plus and add another task to the task database as well. And then obviously define the details for those tasks as well. And that way you sort of have the best of both worlds where you're not creating too many different types of templates for the task database but you are still populating the page content in those task pages because you can't do that from uh, these settings for the automation here. And then you do define your details about each individual task in the automation settings itself. So that's one of our automations that we've got set up there. And then obviously we have another automation for our logo design view, which just creates a different set of tasks when a project is created in the logo design view just here. Now that we've created the task for our project, we can scroll on down to the next type of automation, which will send notifications when a task has been assigned to a particular person. So again, in this first example, we're using the same type of setup to filter our automation trigger. And here, we've got this automation set up to send a notification to me when a task is created in the Alex's tasks view. This view has a filter on it to only display tasks which are assigned to me, which also means that any tasks that are created in this view will be automatically assigned to me. So I know that I want this automation to be triggered whenever a new page is added to this view. And for our action, this time we are choosing to send me a notification in my Slack workspace so that I get a heads up that there's something new for me to work on. We've also got a list of channels here, but in this instance, because the task is specifically for me, we can just send it directly to me instead. So to show you how that looks, if we just switch over to my Slack workspace here, we're looking at the Notion apps messages here, and this is a list of all of the notifications that have been sent to me. You can see that we're sent several details about each task that is created. So we can see which database the task was created in, which view it was created from, uh, who's assigned to the task, and basically all of the, the contents of the different properties that I've got configured for my task database. So it's quite nice to have that there for my reference. And then I've got this button here, which allows me to open the task page in Notion. If we go back to Notion then and switch to the My Project view, the other option that we've got here is to send a notification to a channel. So if this task database view was displayed inside my product team's uh, team space, for example, and we wanted to send that team a notification whenever a new task was created for them, then we can use similar logic. Obviously, again, we're filtering this automation by view. 
triggering it when a page is added to the view and then we're sending a notification this time to the product channel so that every member of the team can see those notifications and not just a specific person. So again, we have a summary of the details of that task just there. And as I mentioned earlier, we can be a lot more specific now with our trigger criteria. So if we did want to choose, uh, you know, to only send notifications when a task reaches a certain status or is assigned a certain priority, we have the option to do that as well for our Slack notifications. Next up, if we scroll down the page here, we've got this view of our task database, which is displaying our tasks with the different statuses on the horizontal axis here. And this time we want to set up an automation to notify a particular person once a task is ready for them to review it. So if we drag and drop our task into the review column, then after three seconds or so, that task is going to be reassigned to Francis and she'll receive a notification from Notion using the built-in notifications functionality to let her know that that task is ready for her to check out. So the way this automation is set up here is we're just looking for tasks that are moved into a status of review and then we're reassigning that task to Francis. Obviously, as an additional step here, we could send Francis a DM to let her know that that task is there in Notion if she prefers to use Slack notifications. And another thing that you could potentially do here is add a couple of date properties to your task database to store the date when a task is moved into the review status and store the date when the task is moved to an approved status so that you can measure the time between those two different dates. And then you can calculate how long it takes to review tasks on average. Next up, if we scroll down to our close date updates just here, this is shifting away from our project management workflows for a second, but this is a user use case that I've wanted for a very long time ever since I created my advanced CRM template because it's something that's available in Salesforce but hasn't been available for Notion users until now. One of the common complaints of sales managers is salespeople often forget to update the close date for their opportunities or sales when those sales are moved to closed one or closed loss. So now what we can do is set up an automation to automatically record that close date for them. And we'll see this date here update in just a second to record the date when that particular action was taken. So again, nice simple automation. So you just set to close one or close lost. We set the close date to today. That's one less thing for the salespeople to have to worry about. And obviously you could do something similar with your projects. The only thing is that automation functionality is a little bit limited at the moment because you don't have the option to set an end date for your date property. You can only populate the property itself. So if you use date ranges for your projects, for example, then unfortunately that option is just not going to be available for you at the moment. But hopefully that's something that Notion will improve soon. So I hope that gives you a good sense of some of the things that you can use this new automations functionality for. Hopefully Notion will add support for more types of properties soon, especially formulas, so that we can create lots of different types of triggers and potentially create some quite sophisticated triggers there as well. If you're a developer, then you should be pretty excited about this because I think this is a good step towards Notion releasing webhook functionality for us. I'm guessing that they're using this feature to test how much load this puts on the platform first. So hopefully we won't have to wait too much longer for that functionality to be released. In the meantime, unfortunately, automations can't trigger webhooks. So we do still have to use our own methods to find out when pages have been updated in databases. But again, hopefully not for too much longer. So if you have any questions at all about using this functionality, please feel free to add a comment and stick around because I'll be sharing lots more videos about automations and all of the exciting features that Notion's releasing on this channel very soon.